All right, so Not what really. is this residential center? Oh, this is a, um, a place that the ministry owns. Well, not own. We're we're in the process of buying that. Yeah, we don't so own it yet. So, are you renting to buy, or are you yeah, we're leasing to buy. You have that as an asset of two point eight four four two million eight hundred forty four thousand five hundred. So, do you own it? I just answered that, didn't I? I said we didn't own it. Okay, we but where to where does it. the? I'm sorry. We're leasing to buy it. Did, did you? I thought we just said that. All right, but yeah. you have listed it as an asset worth two million eight hundred forty-four thousand oh, dollars. Oh, oh, that should be more of a liability. All right, so where does the number two million eight hundred forty-four thousand come from on your asset liability? That's, I guess, the appraisal value of the home or the residential center. Yeah. Is it a home? No, it's a residential center. We use it. Right. So you're saying it's not something you own, but you have it listed as an asset of $2.8 million. That's probably a mistake. Like I say, it probably should be a liability. Okay. And what goes on at the residential center? It is a, um, really it's a gathering place for our ministry where I bring in um, different uh, leaders and also the staff that we have uh, as a place of uh, you know, maybe um, resort and teaching and training. Resort? Yeah, teaching, a resort where we teach and train. On November 29th, 2013, JMMI paid over $6,000 to Louis Vuitton. Mm -hmm. Yes. What would that be for? Well, this is for clothes concerning my TV ministry as well. Oh, you have to wear Louis Vuitton? Oh, it don't matter what name it is. The point is clothing are allocated to us for ministry purposes as well. What do you mean they're allocated to you? You know, in a media ministry. In a what? Media ministry. Yeah. Okay, or on the road when I'm always traveling and using my clothes, I'm sweating through them. So I'm needing new clothes also for television ministry for the year. So. And so um, you use ministry money to buy your wardrobe? Outfit. Your it's, outfit. Called, it's allocated more towards uh, ministry um, apparel. Does that go into what your income is? I'm sorry. I Do you show that in your income that you got Louis Vuitton clothing? No, that's not. That's, that, that, that doesn't show because it don't go there. It don't go there. Mm -mm, I don't no. know what that means. It don't belong there. That's out of place. What's out of place? You don't get taxed on things like that. That's okay. for that's for a ministry business purpose. So it's not Louis Vuitton. Two last questions because I'm just watching our, our time. Somewhat related to the previous. Over lunch we talked yesterday about salaries, finances in the church, how leadership within the church should assess pastoral salaries, how people should think about money in general, but as the relationship to it, as it relates to the pastors and what they're earning and those types of things. Mm -hmm. You made some great comments that I'd love for you to share with others in regards <laughs> to in regards to the way the church today functions in North America. It, it thinks like big business. It thinks like the world around them. It doesn't think Christianly about these things. Right, right. So can you speak into that and share some of the thoughts you shared yesterday? Um, I can't remember them all, but I'll, <laughs> I'll start talking and you can tell me what I'm not saying. Um, churches should not try to keep their pastors poor and should not want to make them rich. That'd be a good place to start. Mm. Um, don't muzzle the ox while he's treading out the grain, right. which in context for Paul meant don't make him moonlight. Don't, don't call a pastor and say, well, we, we assume your wife is going to work. Right. That's, a bad, that's a bad way to call a pastor. Call a pastor and help him. Now, do, a, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, but Paul was a tent maker and he was a bivocational. Paul justified his tent making 
almost by saying he was disobeying Jesus. He said, the master said, the workman is worthy of his wage. I will not take that right, lest I bring any reproach upon the gospel. He didn't take anything. He wasn't bivocational. He was one vocational. Right. Right. He got all of his money from tent making, lest the Corinthians or the Thessalonians said he was mooching right. off of them and a scoundrel trying to make money. He did not want pastors to do that. He, what he says was, churches pay your pastors. So all that at the bottom end of minimal salary, don't make a moonlight and don't assume their wife is going to catch up pay them what they need to have a, now here, here's the trouble, they have a what? A jet? You hear that? Can I please, <laughs> can I please have your money so that I can get a new jet, yeah, Mr. Mr. Creflo? Yeah, I was reading about that last night. Um, no, you may not have my money to get a new jet. Right. So establishing the top end is a little bigger of a biblical challenge. And there I would go to texts like those who desire to be rich fall into many temptations. They pierce themselves with many pangs and bring themselves to ruin. And therefore, I think pastors should teach their churches the dangers of money. It is hard for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. Why would a pastor want to make it hard for himself or anybody else to get into the kingdom of heaven? The prosperity preachers just don't get this. They don't seem to get the dangers. They think money is all a sign of blessing when the Bible regularly says it's a sign of danger. Right. You are liable to be cursed if you want to be rich. And so where we ended was, you live in Vancouver where houses cost a million bucks, or you live in uh, just Barnesville, Georgia, where you can get a house for $50,000. You need a formula right. that doesn't criticize the pastor here who's making six figures and the pastor there who's plenty well off at $60,000. You know, just, so the formulas should, are, should be the same somehow, and the, the uh, quantity is going to be different. So the principles are, we want our people to be radically devoted to sacrificial service in this world. John Wesley said, what, make as much as you can, save as much as you can, and give as much as you can. And I think when he died, he had a silver spoon to his name. Huh. Um, so what we want, we're not going to tell the guys working here or the women working here in uh, Vancouver, uh, don't, make, don't make a lot of money. I never would say that. I would just say don't keep a lot of right, money. Right, right, right. Figure out what a wartime lifestyle looks like in a world with suffering, like an earthquake in Nepal, uh, 6,000 people groups who do not have the gospel, untold number of, of people disadvantaged than you, and think of a, use all of your, your American entrepreneurial ways <laughs> to multiply giving. Multiply giving. Be, be a generous people. So I think you, what you want to create is, is conduits, and you want to preach. The conduits can be coated with copper, thank you very much. They don't need to be huh. coated with gold. So let, let it flow, and the conduit of your house, your life, your car, keep it copper. Now, I could get more specific if you wanted me to about <laughs> what copper like, is like and what gold is. Lamborghini, <laughs> Rini, whatever that car is, and Ford, or whatever you have here. Yeah. And, um, just keep, you don't, if you make $500,000 a year. You don't need to symbolize it with your car and your rings and your watches and your suits. You don't. The culture will tell you, uh, you deserve a lazy boy. And, and you, will, you will go buy all the symbols of what you make. And so it becomes power. It's really about power then. You, you don't have to go there. That's what I meant when I said yeah. we, we start to think like the world right. when we pay each other or do our lifestyles. We, and pastors like us should be helping our people break free. So let me, let me anger all my lead pastor friends. This is one of the questions we had, or one of the discussion items related to this yesterday. Should lead pastors just necessarily be paid the most on a staff? What I said was 
There came a moment when we had grown from one pastor in 1980 to 25 pastors in 19, uh, 2013, and I had put a cap on my salary. I said, don't go beyond this. I don't need it, and I think it's, it's out of proportion. And they said to me, look, you're making it hard to pay these guys down the line what they ought to be paid because there's you, there's leads, there's pastors, there's, there's the, the support workers, and they're all gradated, and these people aren't getting enough because you put a cap on. And I looked at them and I said, makes you think they should be paid less than me. Huh. What governing that? What, why, why do you need, where, where is this coming from? That I have to be paid more than everybody when I tell you I don't need it. And that's just pure American. Right. That's pure American. That's, that's not biblical. I, need and merit both figure in. But if you got people down here who aren't making it, come on, catch them up. They need to be up. But you don't need to raise me. You don't need these big gaps between your, your, your pastors. Right.